We're going to kick things off with the classic, and I think this is the most important race, obviously, of the Breeders' Cup. This is the thing that's supposed to sort of be the culmination of the entire season. Three-year-olds taking on elders. Perhaps there's some year-end awards on the line. Uh, we're going to take a look at the field. There were 14 signed on for this year's Breeders' Cup Classic, $6 million of the purse, a mile and a quarter. You already know that. And the post-time favorite was Accelerate coming in from Southern California for John Sadler. Now, to date, or to this point anyway, John Sadler had still yet to win a Breeders' Cup race. It was something that needed to be acknowledged, and I'll touch on that after we dive into the results and go over that. But it really was sort of the elephant in the room. Was this horse who had been the best older horse all year going to be able to get the job done on this stage given the fact that, you know what, okay, sure, some of the horses had run well, but some at short prices had run poorly for Sadler. Roaring up between those two as they arrive at the eighth pole. Then Yoshida Axelrod. Ganavera's closing in late. It is Accelerate. He's coming down to the 16th pole in front. Thunderstow on the inside is next. Then Mendelssohn, Ganavera, and Yoshida on the far outside. They're coming to the wire. And Accelerate wins the Breeders' Cup Classic for John Settler. Ultimately, he gets the job done. Why? Because he's a tremendous horse and John Sadler's a really good trainer. Accelerate gets the job done in the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Classic at odds of 5-2. to two. Gunavera, a giant, giant second-place finish beneath Arad Ortiz Jr. at odds of 30-1. to one. Thunder Snow runs third at 14-1. to one. And Yoshida rounds out your Superfecta at odds of 14-1. to one. If you played the Exacta for a buck, $130.80. The 50-cent try comes back just over $806.00. And the 10 cent superfecta for 10 cents comes back over $1,600. A really, really strong showing as far as the wagering is concerned and things of that nature for a Breeders' Cup Classic with a 5 to 2 favorite on top. Let's talk about the Breeders' Cup Classic champion of 2018, Accelerate. He's 10 of 22 lifetime, 20 times in the money from 22 lifetime starts. He is over $5.7 million, just shy of $5.8 million in career earnings, owned by Ronus Racing LLC, trained by John Sadler, bred by Mike Abraham in Kentucky, ridden to victory by Joel Rosario. And you can see the pedigree at the bottom of the horse card. He is by looking at Lucky out of an awesome, again, mare named Issues. From a nuts and bolts standpoint, the Breeders' Cup Classic, it's not going to go down as one of the fastest classics from a speed figure standpoint you're ever going to see. Accelerate earns a 105 buyer and a 127 pace adjusted Timeform US rating. Timeform US had the half three quarters and mile splits all color coded red, meaning they were fast, which you can certainly understand given the fractions that were thrown out there. Uh, you were looking at fractions of 22 and 3, 46 and 2. 10 and 3 for 3 quarters, 35 and 4 for the mile. They stopped the clock in 202 and 4. Um, given the rain that had fallen at Churchill and, and in Louisville and the days leading up to the Breeders' Cup on Friday and Saturday, you would expect perhaps the track was playing a little bit on the slower side, but I don't believe that to be the case because you saw some pretty gaudy times in some of the other races on the main track. So this one was certainly a bit of an eyesore at the end. They were all sort of staggering home. Uh, you had even the closers coming home in 26 and change. You had the horses that showed speed coming home over 27 seconds for that final quarter mile. Far from the fastest finish you're ever going to see, but at the end of the day, when you factor in with a horse like Accelerate, he was wide basically every step of the way, breaking from the far outside 14 post. He carried ground. He loomed up on the far turn with Rosario. He set him down, and he got the job done. This, to me, is a giant effort from this horse. The speed figure, again, may not come back awesome. Comes back solid. Not awesome, though. I thought this was arguably one of his best efforts to date. Uh, maybe the Pacific Classic was his crowning achievement, and we'll find out. It sounds like Accelerate. He's going to run one more time. That's the plan. He'll run in the Pegasus World Cup before going off to Stan Stud. I thought it was a big effort, and I'm going to say this here. I had alluded to it when we went over this race in one of the Breeders' Cup focuses. When you talk about Accelerate, I will tell you right now, I'm going to vote for him for Horse of the Year over Justify. There is nothing anyone else can say to change my opinion. I will give you the rationale, whether you agree with it or disagree with it. That's kind of your problem. Accelerate to me. When you go through and look and see what he's accomplished this year, winning the Santa Anita Handicap, winning the Gold Cup at Santa Anita, winning the Pacific Classic, winning the Breeders' Cup Classic, those four races at a mile and a quarter at three different racetracks, 
one of them shipping out of his sort of familiar surroundings. And by the way, his only loss this year came to City of Light, who we'll touch on later on in this show, did something pretty big on Saturday afternoon beneath the Twin Spires. Accelerates overall body of work, to me, is more impressive than Justify winning the Triple Crown. From a speed figure standpoint, Accelerate ran faster than Justify ever ran. From a class standpoint, Accelerate beat better horses than Justify ever beat. If you want to use this race as sort of a barometer, the highest finishing three-year-old was Mendelssohn, the much maligned Mendelssohn by many people. I thought this was a big effort from him. We'll touch on him again in a little bit. If you look at the horses that he faced or at any point justify throughout those three races, you're looking at Lone Sailor, um, you know, you're looking at Catholic Boy, but he never really even faced Catholic Boy. So uh, to me, he beat a what ended up being a less than stellar group of three year olds. My bigger point, and this is the best sort of analogy I could possibly make if you look at the NCAA basketball tournament every year, it happens every year. And it's a bunch of kids in college. And at the end of the tournament, there is a most outstanding player awarded. Kind of call it the MVP, but it's not most valuable player. It's the most outstanding player. The equivalent of taking a horse that only ran in the Triple Crown races and three-year-old restricted races and saying that he's horse of the year, that to me would be the same sort of thing as taking the most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament and saying that for the year, he was basketball player of the year, ahead of all the other players that play in the NBA, whether it's LeBron James or James Harden or Steph Curry or you know Kevin Durant or Anthony Davis or any of them. That to me sounds so absurd, it's not funny. And people will take this the wrong way and say, well, this is a knock against Justify. It's not a knock against Justify. He, you cannot take away what he accomplished. He's the 13th Triple Crown winner ever. But just at the at the bare bones of it, the just the when you look at it, how illogical does that sound? A horse that never faced older horses, never ran faster than the older horses, or his main competitor, Accelerate. Why? What? Just because we build the Triple Crown to be the end all be all? I'm probably on an island with this. The, the, the idea of a age-restricted series, no matter how difficult it is, being the end-all be-all, and especially when you compare it to a campaign like Accelerate has had, just seems ridiculous to me. I think, on the whole, Accelerate's overall body of work culminating in beating the best older horses that were basically all over the world, because you did have Thunder Snow come over here. You did have Roaring Lion, whether he wants the dirt or not, or he wanted the dirt or not. Clearly he didn't. But the point is, he took on the best of the best outside of his comfort zone, and he got the job done. I would have, I would give a horse like Justify the horse of the year without question had he gone and run in a race like this and won, or at least was right there with Accelerate. I would, I, would, I would at least consider it. But to me, if he had beaten Accelerate, f for sure, horse of the year. But he never even faced him. So I'm left, I'm sit here, sitting here thinking, well, w would he have progressed and beaten him? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe it's even probable. But he never, he never faced him. So how can I sit here and say that his year was better than this horse's? He never ran as fast as him. He never beat better quality than he did. And by the way, he never raced past the first weekend in June. That to me is a problem. This horse accelerate ran the entire year. Why is it different than American Pharaoh? American Pharaoh showed up and beat older horses in the Breeders' Cup. Justify never did. I'm voting for accelerate. And that's my case. I'm sticking to it. As far as the rest of the field is concerned, uh, can't touch on everyone. Just from a timing standpoint, uh, we'll touch on some of the horses that are confirmed to be, their plans are confirmed. Uh, Yoshida, he's going to go on. Uh, they'll continue on with the dirt campaign. Potential next start is in the Pegasus. Thought he ran just fine. Oh, and we need to touch on the John Sadler piece real quick. Uh, congratulations, to John Sadler. Well-deserved. He has had a number of Breeders' Cup starters. No question about it. 
but to there were a number of people on Twitter that said you need to stop talking about the, the number, the number, number. That to me is absurd. That that's part of the story. And the reason that it was part of the story is because John Sadler is as good as he is. It's no different than when Phil Mickelson, for the longest time, when are you going to win the major? When are you going to win a major? Any major. Not not anyone in particular. Forget the U.S. Open where he was the runner-up at that point on four or five different occasions. Now I think he's been second six times. The point is, the reason that you keep being asked is because you are that good. When you've won basically everything else, people are asking, why? when are you going to get one? So for the folks that were saying it shouldn't have been talked about and the numbers and this, that, and the other thing, you're totally missing the point. That had to be talked about. And you know what? He got the job done. So it won't be talked about now. And Mickelson's record leading up to that point, guess what? It's not talked about anymore. He's gone on to win five more majors. John Sadler, I'm sure, is going to go on to win a number more Breeders' Cups, whichever races they're in. But to, to suggest that it was it should not have been discussed is, is again, foolish. It, 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 it was part of the story. You had to acknowledge it. Especially when earlier in the day you had seen a horse like Catalina Cruiser stop as badly as he did. Now, Catapult, just three races prior in, a giant race. But the fact is, it was still part of the story. But hats off to John Sadler. Again, he's a great trainer. That's why the question was being asked. When are you going to get one? You have to acknowledge it. Uh, we haven't had any success yet. Finally, got over the hump. And he deserves it. With this horse specifically, I almost feel like it's fitting that this is the horse that got him off the duck. Because Accelerate, you can make the case to me anyway, is the best horse he's ever had and the best training job he's ever done. Anyway, let's move back on to Yoshida. Sounds like the Pegasus World Cup, the dirt race, is on the docket for him. Thought he ran fine, had a great pace to run at, as did Gunavera. I thought Thundersnow, the third place finisher, ran a giant race given where he was on the racetrack, flattened out at the end. Uh, I assume they're going to probably go on with him over to Dubai as a five-year-old. We'll find out, though. Uh, TBD Mendelssohn, I think he's all done here. I think they're going to go and send him off to stud. Um, again, it's just a, a wicked pace. This is two races in a row, which... I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I like that he could adapt to the American running style, but the problem is if, if you're going that fast and you got nothing left in the tank at the end, you're not going to win many of these races. So I love Mendelssohn. I think he was a great talent. If we never see him again, hopefully he goes off and, and passes on those good genes. But I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit disappointed in the fact that it just felt like, especially these last two races, it was just it was all in early. And just pray that you can stick around. And it, realistically, that's not a style that's going to that's going to work for anyone. Uh, Lone Sailor, great, great effort from that horse. I thought it was a great ride from James Graham. Take him all the way back. Just wait, wait, wait. That pace was hot. Come with a run. Uh, big effort to finish sixth. West Coast was terrible. McKinsey was terrible. Um, West Coast is all done. He's going to go off to Lane's End and stand as a stud. Uh, McKinsey will be back as a four-year-old. McKinsey, perhaps it was a combination of being too close to that pace, but my goodness, you want to talk about coming apart at the seams. Sure, the, the pace was fast, but it didn't disintegrate, really. And with the exception of McKinsey, he was up the track. He was nowhere at the end of this thing. I never thought he wanted to go this far, but I thought from a talent standpoint, you could project that forward move. I, I still think he's a really talented horse, but I, I don't know where you, I don't know what his best game is going to be next year as a four year old. Uh, discreet lover. It's a great story for Uriah St. Louis and Manny Franco. Just not quite up to par with this because he got a great pace set up again in this spot and he just didn't really come with the run. Axelrod, I think, ran a deceivingly good race. You take a look and see he finished ninth, beaten quite a bit. I think his race was really quite strong. He was mid pack, or he first initially was toward the rear. He made up a little bit of ground mid pack, put in a legitimate mid move going into the far turn and turn him for home. He was at least there, he was involved. And he flattened out down the lane. Two pieces to that. Making that mid-move into the teeth of the pace, I think that took its toll. I also don't think the distance is his friend. I don't think he's a mile and a quarter horse. If you want to just throw out crazy, bold sort of predictions going forward, we know he's running as a four-year-old. I would put Axelrod on the short list of horses that could be big, particularly in a race like the Metropolitan Handicap. I feel like the Met Mile is going to be a bread and butter kind of race for a horse like Axelrod. Uh, we'll find out other spots. Mile and an eighth, I don't think is, 
ideal for him. I think he's capable at it, and I think he's going to continue to improve. But I think Axelrod's a really talented horse. Pavel looked like he was involved for a little bit, flattened out. Uh, Mind Your Biscuits was terrible. He was my pick in here, and I know he was wide, but he never looked like he was going to run at any step, at any point in the race. Really disappointing effort there. Uh, they are up in the air right now. It'll either be the Cigar Mile or he will be retired and go off to Japan to be a sire. Uh, we'll find out. But again, really, just uh, he did what I didn't think he was capable of doing. My whole logic with him was I wanted the most consistent horse who I didn't think was going to throw in a clunker. And guess what? Of all days to throw in the clunker, Mind Your Biscuits picked this one. It is what it is. He's still a really n- nice horse. Uh, if he does race once more, he's going to be an animal. A serious, serious player in that race in, in New York. We'll find out if they do choose to go there. We've already talked about McKinsey. Catholic boy. Um, he didn't get out of the gate very well. Apparently exited the race with a pretty serious gash on his left front ankle. I Was that part of it? Certainly. That's probably not going to help his cause. Um, he just never got out of the gate with that. Moved up a little bit, but he never threatened. Javier wrapped up on him. He's going to be back as a four-year-old. It sounds like he will run on both turf and dirt as a four-year-old. And I think Catholic boy, you could look at him and project going forward that perhaps he's one of the the early contenders for horse of the year in 2019. Uh, I, I, especially if they do choose to run him in the biggest races on turf and dirt. I know Jonathan Thomas had mentioned the Whitney being one of the main goals, which makes all the sense in the world. He likes Saratoga. It's one of the most prestigious races for older horses and whatnot. And Roaring Lion, who rounds out the field of 14. Um, look, they took a chance. It was basically the owner's call. He couldn't take to the dirt. The Kitten's Joy offspring, they cannot run on dirt, or they just aren't, not at the highest level anyway, let's put it that way. Um, don't hold this against him. He's going to be retired and go off and be a sire. And again, he it seems like he was basically the best middle distance horse in Europe all year. And you know what? There's a real scenario where he goes off and produces some nice, some nice horses going forward. So the Breeders' Cup Classic 2018, it is in the books. Accelerate, he wins. He caps off a fantastic 2018 campaign. A tremendous ride from Joel Rosario, who is going to be going west for the winter. He'll be riding out at Santa Anita. A great job by John Sadler, a much-deserved victory. Finally, he's got the Breeders' Cup sort of monkey off his back. And now I'm sure this will be just the beginning of bigger and better things going forward. I'm sure he'll end up going off and winning a number of them before it's all said and done. Like I said, it feels very much like a Phil Mickelson sort of thing. Um, I believe there was the joke that came out on the Breeders' Cup, uh, the betting show, the, the Susan Lucci sort of situation where it took a while, but she finally got one. Here it is. John Sadler's got his. Uh, the Ronas Brothers, congratulations to them as well. Accelerate your 2018 Breeders' Cup Classic champion. He's going to get at least one vote for Horse of the Year. It's going to come from me, and I suspect there'll be a few other folks voting for him as well. It'll be interesting to see how things shake down between Accelerate and Justify for Horse of the Year. Accelerate, 2018 Breeders' Cup Classic champion.